So in this video, I want to talk about the topology of some Lie groups that we've already met and introduce some new ones. Uh, so first of all, let's look at this old friend, the orthogonal group. This is the group of n by n matrices A such that A transpose A is the identity. And I've told you this includes all of the rotations, all the reflections um, of Rn. So we were interested in whether this was a simply connected group. And first of all, I should say it's not even a connected group. So this group has two components. It comes in two pieces. Let's see what I mean by that. Let's just consider the case n equals 2, so O2. So these are the rotations and reflections in two-dimensional space. So you can rotate by any angle. So there's a component to this group that looks like a circle with one point for every angle that you could rotate by. And you can also reflect about any line through the origin. Um, and you know, if you let that line rotate, it can have any angle. So you get another component of the group, which is also a circle. So this is the rotations and this is the reflections. Over here we have the matrices cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta. So, uh, theta is the angular parameter on this circle. And over here we have uh, the matrices cos theta sine theta sine theta minus cos theta. That's the formula for a reflection around a line that makes an angle theta over 2 with the x-axis. So that's all of the orthogonal matrices in two dimensions. Um, so that's what the group looks like. It looks like two circles. So when you talk about whether a group is simply connected or not, you talk about loops that go through the identity, basically. And the identity is over here in this component, the rotation component. Um, and certainly it's not simply connected because you can have a loop that goes around this circle as many times as you like. Um, so this is not simply connected. What distinguishes these two circles? Um, well, this circle over here is the circle of matrices that have determinant equal to one. And over here we have the circle of things that have determinant equal to minus one. If you compute this determinant, it's minus cos squared minus sine squared. So that's minus one. So this circle over here is a subgroup. It's a group in its own right, the group of rotations. It has a name and it's called SO2, where the S again means special or determinant one. That's what the word special means in this context. So the same kind of picture holds in every dimension. So O n, the rotations and reflections, etc., orthogonal transformations of n dimensional space has two pieces. They're not circles anymore, so I'll just draw, draw them as blobs. There's some high dimensional things. There's S O n, which are the ones that have to turn at one. And then there's everything else. And this is not a subgroup. It doesn't contain the identity. So this is just everything else. It includes the, the uh, reflections, but it also includes things like where well, you do three reflections or five reflections. Um, so again, these are the ones with determinant minus one. These are the ones with determinant plus one. And remember, any orthogonal matrix has determinant plus or minus one, because if you just take det of A transpose A, you get det A transpose times det A. Well, they have the same determinants, so that's det A squared. And this is equal to the determinant of the identity, which is equal to one. So det can only be plus or minus one because it has to square to give one. Okay, so again, let's focus in on this component of the orthogonal group that contains the identity, which is SON, special orthogonal group. Is it simply connected? Well, here we had a loop of uh, matrices cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta which was non-trivial it wouldn't 
um, wouldn't be uh, contracted inside the group. So we'll try something similar. So let's do cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta in the top left of our matrix. And then let's extend the matrix with zeros elsewhere and ones on the diagonal. So it's an n by n matrix. So in other words, this is a rotation around in the x, y plane, and it fixes all the other directions in n dimensions. So this is a loop as theta varies. So this loop, it turns out, is not contractible. There's no null homotopy of this loop. So this is not a simply connected group. However, there's this amazing fact that if you go twice around this loop, you get something which is contractible. So this, uh, let me write it like this. Here's the, here's the loop. So instead of sticking a theta here, let me stick a uh, two theta. Remember theta goes from zero to two pi. So I'm just going around the loop twice. This loop is contractible. I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this to you. Um, this is um, something you can see using uh, something called the Dirac spanner trick. So it turns out this is contractible. So what this is telling us is that there are basically two classes of loops. There's the loops that are contractible and then there's the loops that are equivalent to this first loop, this non-contractible loop. So a fancy way of saying this is the fundamental group, the group of homotopy classes of loops of SON is, uh, based on the identity, is Z mod two. There are two non-trivial classes, two, two classes of loops, one trivial, one non-trivial. Um, okay, so it's not a simply connected group, but it's not far off. And in fact, um, there is another group called spin n, Oh, I should I should really say this is for n strictly bigger than two, right? Because for n equals two, it's a circle, so the fundamental group would be z. Okay, so there's another group called spin n, and a two to one holomorphism from spin n to s o n. Um, such that spin n is simply connected. In particular, this means that um, if you look at the level of Lie algebras, the Lie algebra of spin n and the Lie algebra of S O n are actually isomorphic. So they have the same Lie algebra but just the global geometry of the groups is different. The global topology of the groups is different. So again, you can explore more about the spin groups in one of the uh, in-depth projects. Um, and there'll be a question about the case n equals three because spin three turns out to be a, a very nice group called SU2. So this is a special instance of a very general fact. Um, theorem, which is that um, for any Lie group G, um, there is another Lie group G tilde with which is simply connected. and um, a homomorphism from G tilde to 
to G, which induces an isomorphism on the level of Lie algebras. So G tilde is called a universal cover of G. So this is really something from uh, the theory of topology. Uh, so again, I'm not going to prove this. However, notice that it tells us that this Lie theorem that tells us we can exponentiate homomorphisms for simply connected groups has a bunch of uh, groups to which it can apply. Namely, you take any group, you take its universal cover, and the Lie's theorem applies to the universal cover. Well, okay, it would be really nice if we could give some explicit groups to which this theorem applies. Because um, I haven't really told you what spin n is. So let's make a step in that direction. So um, here's another group. This is the unitary group. This is the group of complex matrices A in uh, little GL, actually it's in big GL because it is invertible, GLN C, such that A dagger A equals the identity. So this is a lot like A transpose A equals the identity, but the dagger is something to do with the complex numbers. So A dagger is A transpose conjugate. So you take the transpose of the matrix and you conjugate all the entries you know, as in complex conjugation. So this is this is like a complex version of the orthogonal group. Um, is this a simply connected group? Well, it turns out it's not. Uh, not yet. We'll get there. We'll get a simply connected example very soon. But the way you see this is, um, well, think about the orthogonal group, remember the orthogonal group, we knew the determinant of an orthogonal matrix is plus or minus one, and then the group split into these two pieces. Uh, what happens for the unitary group is the determinant of A transpose A is the determinant of A transpose times the determinant of A, and that's basically det A conjugate times det A. So if this is equal to the identity, then we're getting that one equals the uh, absolute value of det A. So det A is in the unit complex numbers. So we get a map, the determinant map from UN to U1. And basically there are loops upstairs in UN that map non-trivially to loops in U1. So here's a picture. This is U1 circle and UN is some kind of something above the circle that maps down to the circle. I don't know, it's a bit of a cartoon. UN is really high dimensional in general, um, but it has a map down to the circle. And you get non-trivial loops that start, say, here and go around and come back and they project down to non-trivial loops down here. For example, uh, in U2, e to the i theta 0, 0, 1 would be such an example because it's determinant as e to the i theta, which winds once around the circle. Okay, so this is no good, uh, but what we can do is we can restrict to the subgroup S U N so this is the set of matrices A in UN, so it's a unitary matrix, such that det A equals one. So this thing I've drawn over here, this is SUN. It's just a slice of UN living over one in the unit complex numbers. So this is a subgroup And this guy turns out to be simply connected. For all n. So let's think about this. How might you show that this is a simply connected group? Well, for a start, let's consider SU2. 
the special unitary group of 2x2 two two matrices. So for a 2x2 two two matrix ABCD to be unitary, we want that the dagger of that matrix, which is um, the conjugate transpose, so A transpose, C transpose, sorry, A conjugate, C conjugate, B conjugate, D conjugate, is supposed to be equal to the inverse of A, B, C, D, right? That's, the equation was A dagger A equals the identity, so A dagger should be A inverse. And the inverse of a two by two matrix is one over det times uh, D minus B minus C A. And in this case, we're assuming the determinant is one, so we can get rid of this one over det, and we get some nice equations. We get A bar equals D, we get C bar equals minus B, we get B bar equals minus C and D bar equals A, but they're equivalent to these two. So we get this condition that you know you have to be A, B, minus B bar, A bar. And now you impose this determinant one condition, what does that actually mean in terms of A and B? Well, it's A bar times A, so norm A squared, minus minus B times B bar, so plus norm B squared. This is supposed to be equal to one. So this is um, the group SU2. And this, we can identify with a well-known space called the three-dimensional sphere. Now this is not the sphere that you know from everyday experience, it's not a football. This is a sphere in four dimensions whose surface is three-dimensional. In the same way that a football has a two-dimensional surface, you just need latitude and longitude to describe whereabouts you are on the surface of a football. For this guy, you need three coordinates because your sphere lives in four dimensional space. What is that space? Well, it's the space whose coordinates are the real and imaginary parts of A, the real and imaginary parts of B, and then, you know, with those four coordinates, this equation becomes real part of A squared plus imaginary part of A squared plus real part of B squared plus imaginary part of B squared equals one. And that's just saying you're a distance one from the origin, which is exactly the condition for being a sphere. Okay, so it turns out the three-dimensional sphere is simply connected. That is a, a well-known result in topology. So that tells us SU2 is an example of a simply connected group. Now, if you want to show that SUN is simply connected, you can do that by induction with a bit of topology magic. So, um, SU n plus 1 uh, acts by rotations, well, by, yeah, by transformations, which in particular turn out to be rotations, on n plus 1 dimensional complex space, CN plus 1, just because it's n plus 1 dimensional matrices. Um, and in particular, because it's acting by rotations, it preserves the sphere inside complex n plus one dimensional space. So that sphere, right, let's think, the dimension of the complex numbers is two, you know, as a real real space. So n plus one complex dimensions is two n plus two real dimensions, and the sphere is one dimension less than that. So this will be the, the sphere S two n plus one, the two n plus one dimensional sphere. So we get a map from S u n plus one to S 2n plus 1 that just sends um, a matrix A to AV where V is some fixed. Maybe V is, uh, you know, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, the vector. All right, so AV is always going to live in the sphere. Every point in the sphere can be obtained as AV for some matrix A. And now the pre-image of any points, so the set of all matrices in SUN that send uh, V to a particular point is a copy of SUN, it turns out. Um. 
So we get a structure known as a fibration. So this is this is kind of going way beyond the course now. I'm talking about all sorts of ideas from topology. Um, but this picture is very similar to the picture I tried to draw up here of UN being a fibration over the circle. It maps down to the circle and every slice looks the same. Here we have a map to the 2n plus 1 dimensional sphere and every slice looks like SUN. Um, so using this vibration you can prove by induction um, that SUN uh, is simply connected for all n. Why is this? Well that's because like to start with SU2 is simply connected. The thing down here will be um, S5 if n is 2 uh, and that's simply connected as well and from those two facts you can deduce this total space of the vibration is simply connected. So that would be SU3 and then if you stick SU3 here and you have S7 at the bottom you get that SU4 is simply connected etc. So this is a whole raft of examples of Lie groups that are simply connected um, that we're going to study in this course. Now the examples I've given so far are all so-called compact examples, which means that the matrix entries are bounded. In other words, if I look over the whole group, the matrix entries are bounded. There are other groups that are not compact. So for example, um, let's say GL, N, R. This is not a compact group because I can take any matrix whose determinant is not equal to zero and that will be an element of GLNR. There's no way I can bound the entries. It could be as big as I want. Um, but it turns out that any non-compact group deformation retracts onto a compact group. So deformation retracts is a fancy topological word meaning it sort of squishes back in the same way that um, you know if you cut a point out of the plane what you get retracts onto the circle. Everything can just be squished onto a circle like this. Um, so this is this you know the plane minus a point is the group GL1C. It's the one by one invertible complex matrices and what I'm saying is it retracts onto the group U1. So deformation retracts onto a subgroup, the so-called maximal compact subgroup. I should say a compact subgroup. So in terms of topology, actually, it suffices to understand the compact groups rather than the non-compact groups. Um, so let me just give you some examples of non-compact groups. SLNC uh, contains uh, SUN as a maximal compact subgroup. So its topology is the same. In particular, SLNC is simply connected. Um, SLNR, remember this S means determinant 1. Uh, so if I take determinant 1 matrices with the real entries, this contains all of the rotations and that's also a maximal compact subgroup. So the topology is basically the same and the, um, the big group retracts onto the small group. In particular, it's not simply connected, it has this, um, it's either the fundamental group is either Z if N is 2 or Z mod 2 if N is 3 or more. GLNC retracts onto UN and uh, GLNR retracts onto ON. So this can be proved by the so-called using the so-called polar decomposition of a matrix. For example, um, you know, an element of GL, GL1C 
uh, is a one by one matrix e r e to the i theta where r is non-zero and now it's not too hard to see that the positive numbers are bigger than zero retract onto just the number one um, which tells you then that GL1C retracts onto U1. So you can use the same sort of idea to prove each of these results. So the take home message from this is we have some examples of simply connected Lie groups to which we can apply Lee's, apply Lee's theorem. Um, and the most important ones are these ones, SLNC and SUN.